Today we're going to look at graphing linear equations in standard form. Okay, so as we get started, here are the state standards and your success criteria. You should be able to graph equations of horizontal and vertical lines. You should be able to graph linear equations written in standard form using the intercepts. You should be able to solve real-world problems using linear equations in standard form. All right, so these are the things that we need to be able to do by the end of the lesson. New vocabulary. Standard form of a linear equation is AX plus BY equals C, where A, B, and C are real numbers, and A and B are not both zero. So A or B can be zero, but they can't both be zero, or you do not have a linear equation in standard form. All right, so in general, AX plus BY equals C. Again, A, B, and C are just real numbers. They're just numbers. So this shows you um, Y equals MX plus B. This is slope-intercept form, and if you want to rearrange that, you can put it in standard form. So um, a few steps, a couple steps, and you've got 2X minus Y equals 2. So 2, negative 1. This shows you that B would be negative 1 and then equals 2. So this would be standard form where X and Y are on the same side of your equation here. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is look at graphing a horizontal and vertical line. All right, so example 1, Y equals 4. So if you think of the center as 0, 0, remember the horizontal line is your x-axis. The vertical line is your y-axis. So y equals 4, you're going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4. All right, and then y equals 4 is going to be a horizontal line through 4. All right, x equals negative 2 is going to be very similar. Here's the origin. Okay, this is my x-axis, this is my y-axis. So on my x-axis, I'm going to go over x, negative 1, negative 2, and then I'm going to draw this vertical line here straight through negative 2. So every point on this line is going to have an x of negative 2. Every point on this line is going to have a y-value of 4. Horizontal and vertical lines come from when one of the variables has a zero coefficient. So remember in the definition it said X and Y can't both be zero, but one of them can be a zero. So that's where the horizontal and vertical lines come from. So there would be no um, X in this case and no Y in this case. All right, example two, using intercepts to graph the equation 3x plus 4y equals 12. All right, so we're going to use the intercepts exactly what it's called, um, using intercepts to graph a linear equation. So 3x plus 4y equals 12. We're going to substitute 0 in for x, and then we're going to substitute 0 in for y, and that will give us what we need. So that will give us our two intercepts. Alright, so our y-intercept is 3. If we do the same thing for y, this time we're going to substitute 0 for y. We're going to get 3x equals 12. All right, so our y-intercept is 3, so we're going to go up on our y-axis, 1, 2, 3, and then we're going to come down and we're going to go over 1, 2, 3, 4, And then we're just going to draw a line. All 
try and that would be the graph of 3x plus 4y equals 12. Now we will have arrows on both sides to show that this line is continuous because there's an infinite number of x and y's that would make this, that would land on this line or um, make this equation true. So um, be aware that when we're drawing linear equations, most of the time these are going to have arrows on both ends unless we're looking at a real life situation that has a restriction on the domain and range. All right, we're going to look at another example. Um, each one of these is solved pretty much the same way. So we've got 2x minus y equals 4. We're first going to substitute 0 in for x. Anytime you substitute 0 in, 0 times anything goes away, so you can just figure that is gone. So we have negative y equals 4. Divide by negative 1, y equals negative 4. All right, and then find the other one by substituting 0 in for y. So we got 2x minus 0 equals 4. This drops off. 2y equals 4. Divide by 2, y equals, oh, sorry. This is an x. I can't read my own handwriting. All right, x equals two. All right, so you've got 2x minus y equals four. So I plugged in zero for x first and solved for y. Then I plugged in zero for y and solved for x. So now I have to graph my two points again. y equals negative four. This is my y-axis. Remember negatives go down from zero. So one, two, three, four. Put a point there. And then x equals positive 2. So 1, 2 to the right. Okay, once I have that, again, I'm going to draw my line. Okay, try to get that on here a little bit better. All right, so this line would represent 2x minus y equals 4. So we graph these quickly and easily using the intercepts, substituting 0 in for x and then substituting 0 in for y. Same thing here, substituting 0 in for x and then 0 in for y. So you can see that that's all we had to do to quickly find our intercepts. So in my opinion, if it's in standard form, this is the easiest way to graph an equation in standard form. Modeling real life. Okay, example three. You are planning an awards banquet and need to rent tables to seat 180 people. There are two table sizes available. Small table seat six people. Large table seat 10 people. The equation 6x plus 10y equals 180 models this situation, where x is the number of small tables and y is the number of large tables. A part. Graph the equation. Interpret the intercepts. Find three possible solutions in the content of the problem. All right, so this is in standard form, so we're going to do just like we did before. We're going to have 6x plus 10y equals 180. We're going to substitute 0 in for x and solve for y. Then we're going to do the th same thing for the other variable. All right, so this cancels. We've got 10y equals 180. And divide both sides by 10. So y equals 18. So that's my y-intercept is 18. All right, let's do the same thing for y. So let's have 6x plus 10 times 0 equals 180. 
This drops off, so we're going to have 6x equals 180. Divide both sides by 6. All right, 6 goes into 18, 3. So it's going to be 30. So we have our x and our y intercept. All right, so y equals 18. You can see that because this is a real situation, we don't, we're not going to have negative numbers of tables, negative numbers of seat, um, seats for people to sit at at a banquet. So you're only going to be looking at your positive quadrant. So we only need a graph of quadrant one. And I've already went ahead and labeled this to make sure that we can have a scale that is large enough to include 18 and 30. So you can see I went by 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, and I've went by 2s on both the X and the Y axis. So um, let's graph the Y first. Y is 18. So my Y intercept goes here and X equals 30 would go here. All right, so this time we're not going to have a line with arrows. We're just going to have quadrant one because, again, it's not going to continue into the negatives. So our possible solutions are only going to be in quadrant one. All right, so this would be the graph. So interpret the intercepts. Okay, so it says that small table seats six people and large table seat ten people. So the intercepts tell us that um, the y-intercept would say that we could have 18 large tables and zero small tables. x equals 30 tells us that we could have 30 small tables and no large tables. So that's what the intercepts mean. We also can see that we have a point here it looks like at looks like 1410. Um, you can check to see if 1410 is a solution. Um, it also looks like right here at 1012. This might be a solution. All right. So if you want to check to see if there's other possibilities, remember, um, it's going to have to fall on an, on an intersection to be a possible solution. This looks like this might be close to a solution, maybe 20 and 6, but choose one of these and see if it's a possible solution. It says find three possible solutions in the content of the problem. So we already found two solutions. Two solutions is um, you could have 18 large tables and zero small tables. You could have 30 small tables and zero large tables, or let's check and see if this is a solution. So how do we know if this is a solution or not? We can plug in the ordered pair and see if it works. So I'm looking at just one of the ordered pairs that looks like it's on an intersection, which would be 10, 12. So let's, let's see if 10, 12 makes this equation true. So how do we do that? We plug in 10 for X. And we plug in 12 for y and we check to see if it will hold 180 people okay all right so let's pull up the calculator here okay so six times ten plus 10 times 12, that equals 180. So 10 and 12 is a solution. So 10, uh, 10 small tables and 12 large tables would also be a solution for this problem. So that is your third possible solution.